I played the crap out of Death Stranding, just under 200 hours across PS4, PS5, and a little bit on PC. I even did a video breaking it down in detail that was as long as a feature-length Christopher Nolan film. I had a lot to say about it, obviously, but my broad opinion was that while it was relaxing to play and easy to get lost within for good and bad reasons, Kojima's unbridled writing and creative choices led to a game that was unfocused, bloated, and way more confusing than it needed to be. However, in spite of this, I still found the game pretty fun, and I gave it roughly an 8 out of 10, though I recommended if people weren't sold on it initially, they should probably just wait for a sale. In a lot of ways, I think Death Stranding is a lot like a hiking simulator. Some people love hiking, some hate it. But fundamentally, it's an activity that can only be entertaining if one finds it inherently enjoyable. If one does not possess that proclivity, they simply will not connect with it. In other words, you either like a game like Death Stranding, or you don't. And that's okay. Now for those of us who enjoyed the base game, there are a lot of things that the director's cut improves upon that are worthy of laudation mostly graphical and related to gameplay efficiency. But there are also many things introduced that either fail to improve the base gameplay or that are an actual waste of the players and the developers time because they're so poorly executed and even antithetical to everything that makes Death Stranding enjoyable. We're going to run through both of these in this video, the good and the bad. Like I said, I did play through all of Death Stranding at launch and then some, and I enjoyed it, so I do have some high expectations here. I'm not going to blindly praise something just because I love Kojima. If you want to see someone suck up to Kojima, go watch Young, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Sorry, was that too catty? Okay, I'll shut up. Still here? Great. Death Stranding's director's cut. It was initially shown off in a trailer that gained a lot of hype and that we're going to be addressing time and time again throughout the course of this video. The primary purpose of this trailer was to show off what seemed to be Metal Gear Solid inspired missions. This excited many of us that this was going to lead to all new content and gameplay opportunities. So naturally hype started building and when we saw that there were going to be other new items, new standard orders, and even a new storyline that was hinted at, many people started to view this $10 upgrade price tag as very low for what they expected to get. But let me be very clear, this is mainly a graphics, load time, and FPS upgrade. Yes, there are new items, new orders, and even a couple of new mini games that they've thrown in here, but it's all extremely flawed. I'm about to explain why, but my point is don't look at this as an expansion to the base game because it really isn't. It's a tweaked version of the game that uncaps the frame rate for $10. It also throws in some DualSense support and a few laughably small additions that, to be perfectly frank, should have been free. I mean, Death Stranding sold over 5 million copies. 5 million. Kojima Productions is not strapped for cash. It's ridiculous to suggest that this $10 upgrade fee is something they needed to bankroll their next game's development. It's just not true. Also note that this isn't currently available on the PC version of the game. I'm guessing it's because the three main improvements here are frame rate, dual sense support, and load times. So none of those would really stand out on PC as improvements because people are already getting higher frame rates, have faster load times than the base PS4, and they don't have a dual sense controller to use. So it would honestly be really hard to justify charging anything for what's here beyond that, so I think they just didn't bother releasing it on PC, but that should tell you the amount of content that's actually here. You know, beyond just the gimmick of having faster load times, an uncapped frame rate, and DualSense controller support. It's all bare minimum stuff that frankly should have been free. So what parts of this are good and what parts are bad? What falls short and why? Well, let's jump into it. But first, huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. 
Skillshare is the online learning community for every kind of learner. Whether you're looking to learn how to draw, paint, or improve your video editing, Skillshare has a ton of classes taught by industry professionals to help you achieve those goals. I, for one, have wanted to learn how to use Adobe After Effects in these videos. So, after years of procrastinating, I decided it was time, and I started learning how to use the software on Skillshare. Specifically, I found this class, Animating with Ease in Adobe After Effects, by Jake Bartlett, and hopefully you've noticed the improvements in my editing in the last few videos. But it's not just After Effects. They have classes on almost anything you could think of. And the first 1,000 people that click on the link in the description box below will get a one-month free trial. Check them out today. Now, as far as I can tell, there's two basic approaches one can take to the director's cut either a fresh run through or a PS4 save transfer into the director's cut edition of the game and then picking up the new content during the perpetual wait for the inauguration mission that you default to after finishing the main story. I tried both, but ultimately I decided that the quality of life improvements, such as the steady 60 FPS, the dual sense support, the new cosmetics, new items such as cargo catapults, the ramps, buddy bots, all of it contributed to a noticeable step up in terms of the feel of the gameplay, but to be perfectly honest, they weren't enough to justify spending three months working through the lengthy campaign all over again. So after spending about six hours of the early game in the director's cut, I decided to just back out and pick the game up with my finished save file, trying out everything that the director's cut had to offer. We'll talk more about whether or not this was the right decision at the end of the video, but for now just understand that most of this new content is gated between certain story beats in the main campaign. If you start with your endgame save file, you can bypass all of it and get access to everything all at once, whereas playing through the game from the beginning will introduce it at a slow trickle. So what content is there for those of us who finish the base game? Well, there's a whole new series of missions to complete, all based around new systems that greatly complement the base game's mechanics. There's so much here that it will likely make you fall in love with the game all over. And if you've played the director's cut, you may be wondering what the hell I'm talking about because none of that is true. You see, those new Metal Gear missions that they advertise take around 45 minutes to complete and has to be some of the most lazy and uninspired add-on content I have ever seen. Allow me to explain. This new content is made up of three basic orders. All three use the same area with no changes made in between. The first order can be done early in the game if you're restarting. Basically, you head to this location, fight or stealth through four to five enemies, and then fetch documents that you return to the distribution center. A fetch quest. Not a big deal, but a lame start. From there, you can engage in the second mission, where you do the same exact thing as the first mission, but explore further in this time, pushing past the first door that was locked the last time you were here. But this go around, you're dropping something off. And that's it. So after dealing with some super dumb enemies, you just leave until you finish the game and are ready for the final mission. So if they hard gate this final mission to the end of the game, surely it must be something really cool. Surely there must be something here that's worth engaging with. Well, heading into the third mission, we go to the distribution center again, pick up the order, and do the same exact stuff as the last two missions. You fight past a few guards, push through a door, fight through a few more guards, and then there's another door that's unlocked this time for some reason. And then we arrive at the moment that most of us will have been waiting for. The Metal Gear Solid inspired content that was raised in the trailer. I mean, to me, this seemed so heavy handed that they were clearly going to do Metal Gear Solid inspired missions as an add on for Death Stranding. And I thought that because of this cutscene that they showed in that trailer that we looked at just a few minutes ago. I mean, surely they wouldn't just tease that and then do the literal opposite, right? Well, wrong. You see, they teased a stealth mission. But then they require the player to incapacitate all of the guards here. Sorry, Sam. Looks like you triggered an emergency lockdown. Only way to lift it is to neutralize all the hostiles in that room. And I know what you're thinking. Maybe you can just stealth around and take them out one by one. So it sort of is a stealth mission. Well, not quite, because if you are discovered at any point here, they will start shooting at you and there's no automatic fail state. 
It just turns into a shooting arena the second somebody sees you. And the only way to get down to the main floor where you could use your strand, for instance, to incapacitate these guys stealthily, just so happens to be lined up perfectly with everybody's line of sight. So the second that you step on these stairs, you're spotted and the shooting arena begins. So either it is the world's worst design stealth level ever, or it's just a shooting arena. I mean, it's infuriating. This is literally just a shooting gallery that they advertised as a stealth mission, much to the excitement of Kojima and Metal Gear fans everywhere. And this is my problem with it. They knew what they were doing. This is nothing short of deceptive marketing in my mind. And I think you could even present a compelling argument that it could constitute false advertising. It's a bait and switch. They heavily implied that they were going to present missions and orders that were in the same vein as Metal Gear Solid. And then they pulled it out from under you, giving you shooting arenas, which is something that Death Stranding has never done well to begin with. And yes, that's it. That's all the content that this entire quest line has to offer. There there are some cutscenes that play out after this, but that's it for the gameplay. Listen, I wanted to love this. New orders with alternate gameplay themes that could transform the entire experience. Sign me up. I wanted to become obsessed with the game all over again. But I have to be honest, this is just not good enough. Regardless, setting all of that aside, there are some other things to do here, and there's other content that they've added. So you know what? Who cares if the story additions are severely lacking? What have they done that makes this director's cut worth your time? Well, for one, they removed monster energy drinks, which is kind of funny. They also added DualSense controller support, which excited me, but I think it actually falls somewhat flat. Guns do have support and each weapon does feel different and individualized, but the shooting mechanics here are just so poorly implemented and Kojima Productions did absolutely nothing between the game's launch and now to improve upon them. So it's kind of like having a good feeling water gun. It's good, I guess, but it doesn't make them any more useful. Now, since we mentioned guns. They did add a shooting range here to enjoy all of the aforementioned water guns that Death Stranding has to offer. There's also all sorts of challenges in these small maps that they've built out, such as stealth challenges, arena shooting, and even ones where you have to blow up a bunch of jellyfish within the allotted time. Amazingly, this shooting range offers the best stealth experience that the entire package possesses. I thought surely the Metal Gear Solid inspired missions that they teased so heavily leading up to the director's cuts launch would provide us that stealthy scratch to the itch, but I stand corrected. The shooting range is a nice addition, but unless you are a completionist, it's unlikely that you'll spend more than half an hour messing around in here before returning to the actual game. They do have some rewards such as crafting materials that you can use to build roads and other items in the world once you leave the shooting range, but I'm going to be real with you. You're going to have so many materials by the time you reach the end of the game. You're not going to say to yourself, ooh, I need to build a bridge. Let me go to the shooting range and blow up some jellyfish. That will never enter your mind. And this lack of substance is actually true of most of the additions in the director's cut. They offer a quick distraction, but you'll inevitably return to the base game, which is good. It means that the base game was good enough that you want to keep playing it with the quality of life improvements. But it's just unfortunate that they weren't able to come up with much of anything to add substance to the experience that's here. Shooting range? Cool. You're going to mess around with it for 20, 30 minutes and then go back to what you were doing and probably forget it's there. These new orders, you're going to do them, be disappointed, and then continue on your way playing in the base game. It doesn't add anything. One of the opportunities they did have to make an improvement on the base game would be with the vehicles. However, they didn't do that. You see, the vehicles in Death Stranding and Death Stranding's director's cut just don't work. I get it, it's really hard to get all-terrain transportation working in any game. But the thing is, it's been done before in other titles with far smaller teams and less resources. Kojima Productions doesn't get a pass on this just because this was their first game as a studio. They charged full price for their game and they have some of the most hardcore, talented developers in all of Japan working for them. If you're gonna put a system in your game, it should work. 
I can't begin to tell you how many times in the base game and even the director's cut, I was screwed over by different vehicles that just didn't work properly. Getting stuck on rocks, motorcycles, clipping into things that they shouldn't be able to clip into, acceleration and deceleration that doesn't make sense on any planet regardless of gravity, and of course, bugged out physics. There's no way around it. The vehicles in this game are just clunky and poorly executed. It doesn't mean that the rest of the game isn't good, but it is to say that the vehicles we have access to could have been improved massively, and this director's cut could have been an optimal time to do so, especially considering that they put a ton of effort into creating a new vehicle entirely in the form of the Roadster. And yeah, Roadster. Racing is here now because, you know, everyone played Death Stranding and shared the exact same thought. Not that the game was slow, repetitive, and sometimes just plain boring, but no, that the one thing the game did need was a wannabe Mario Kart mode. And <laughs> it's made all the worse because the driving still sucks so bad. They could have made an actual stealth quest line, but no, no, they needed to add a racetrack that you can use to time yourself going around a single loop of asphalt while not having any fun at all. So all of this brings me to the central question. Who is this for? Is it for Death Stranding fans? Well, beyond the technical refresh on PS5 and some new gear, everything it has to offer is antithetical to the gameplay loop of the base game. That experience was about saving the United States, connecting people together, completing deliveries while overcoming all of these incredible hurdles, even sometimes literal mountains. But no, they added a shooting range and a racetrack. The only good thing I can say about the director's cut is that it's a good excuse to replay the base game at 60 FPS. They do add some new orders and some crafting items, but I'll be perfectly honest, none of these crafting items such as the cargo cannon, which I was able to get bugging out within the first three attempts at using it, or these new ramps or the buddy bot, none of it is impactful enough for me to go back to the base game and be upset if it were missing. Seriously, if I played through the PS4 version of the game, I don't think at any point in my run I would be like, Oh, where's the racetrack? Or bummer, the buddy bot isn't here. I just don't think they are enough to justify playing through the game all over again. And so it seems that Kojima Productions probably would just prefer that players just start over and experience the game from the beginning. But what's frustrating is that it really seems as though Kojima Productions has structured everything in this director's cut such that it demonstrates a strong preference on their end that players just start over and play through the game from the beginning. And like I said, I would have done that, but the quality of life improvements that they've made do refine the experience, but they just don't markedly change it. The grind, the extremely drawn out mid game, and the nonsensical monologues that go for 10, 20, or 30 minutes at a time are all still here. I get it, this is a director's cut. It wasn't supposed to be like a large expansion or DLC. So to expect more content and more transformational updates is unreasonable. I agree with that, but I can't help but feel as though Kojima Productions heard all of the criticisms of the base game and then simply decided to double down on them with the director's cut showing either a lack of appreciation for their fans' critiques or a blatant disregard for constructive feedback. The guns in the base game felt like water guns, so what did they decide to do? They added a shooting range with challenges that center around a mechanic which is wholly unfixed. They also advertised new missions and orders, including one which was supposed to be in the vein of Metal Gear Solid, arguably the most successful stealth gaming series ever made. And then they decided to use those missions as a way to force the player into more mediocre shooting arenas. They heard that all of their driving and vehicle mechanics were lacking, clunky, and sometimes downright broken. So what did they do? They added a racetrack and introduced a new vehicle that's possibly worse than anything in the base game in terms of actual driving efficiency without fixing any of the issues. Listen, as a fan of Death Stranding, I can't help but feel as though all of the problems we pointed out when the game launched in hopes of Kojima listening for a possible sequel or whatever game comes next, weren't even evaluated by the development team. 
It honestly wouldn't surprise me if Kojima simply shook his head and then exclaimed loudly while standing on top of a desk that all of these alleged problems are part of my visions and they should get over it. It's the age old problem of having a creative dictator in charge. There's no such thing as constructive feedback. There's only insubordination. And even now in the comment section, you will probably see this same attitude echoed by some other fans of Kojima and his work. If you disagree with something that he did in Death Stranding or in the director's cut, it's not just your opinion or even a valid criticism levied against a fallible man, it's a personal attack on the genius savior of the industry that they hold so dear. But setting all of that aside, if the director's cut is not meant for people who played through the game all the way through the last time around, is it meant for people new to the game? Well, I don't think that would make much sense either, because it's still Death Stranding. The base game is still the same, albeit with some new equipment, graphical improvements, and efficiency refinements. If you tried Death Stranding at launch and hated it, the director's cut will do absolutely nothing to change your mind. A small shooting range, three fetch quests that appear as stealth missions but turn into shooting galleries, and a racetrack are not going to make this game enjoyable for those that found it boring the first time around. The only group that I could see this being for is the small group that haven't played the game at all, and who would want to try it for the first time. But for those people, it will be a full $60, which is insane. This game is two years old and the frame per second improvements and the load time reduction is the only thing that makes it justifiable as a PS5 title and even then, honestly, these improvements should have been free. Seriously, if you've considered playing Death Stranding and haven't gone and leapt off of the cliff yet to try it, play it on PC or just get it on PS4. Or the pro strat would be to buy it for PS4 while it's on sale and then upgrade it for 10 bucks to the director's cut. But that might take a little finagling on your part. All of this to say, I really don't know who this is for, which reaffirms my belief that it's confused and poorly executed. And it also demonstrates that all of these sycophantic YouTubers making excuses for Death Stranding's director's cut and all of Kojima's craziness it all just goes to show you that they aren't actually consumer advocates. They're just fanboys who care more about verbally filleting Kojima than being honest and protecting their viewers' wallets. All told, save your money. Even the $10 upgrade cost on PlayStation is just too much for this. Don't reward this laziness with your money. You can be a fan of Kojima while being critical of this lazy cash grab. Just don't make excuses for it. I'm pissed I spent my own hard-earned money on this game, and I don't want you to make the same mistake. Just stay away. That's my recommendation. I'm done with Death Stranding, and as far as I'm concerned, I will never play it again.